Um, thank you, Beverly. I'm presenting the Melbourne Indigenous Transitions to the Building House. Um, so I'm staff in the Parliament of the Country, um, and my respect is past present. So MITS is a transition school for Indigenous students that started in 2016 um, and takes students from remote regions of the Northern Territory for our into a transition school program and then they force it out to other schools around Melbourne where they have board or they have sort of close families. Um, and that was sort of aimed to address a real barrier for education for our students, particularly in remote Northern Territory, who didn't have access to education and needed to travel. That's been a really successful program, but it's have identified a series of issues around cultural safety as those students moved on to travel isolation, to that sort of increasing engagement and that was not growing. Um, so the solution to this has been to build a series of houses for years, students in years 8 to 12. Um, and this is really a combination. So the site's in Richmond, the corner of Swan and Church Street, 371 Church Street to the north of Swan Street. Uh, it's part of a collection of existing mids building houses. Um, and it's a school at the Richmond Football Club in Yarra Park, which is a significant site for cultural interest where we know. Um, critically, three existing boarding houses in white were all refurbished as monastic or colonial buildings. This is the first time it's has been able to build a building that is referred to the R and students. So that's really been the ground bed. Um, the brief is to provide a home for 40 students, along with the administration staff, um, and being in gathering spaces that would support community engagement, and a kitchen and dining facilities for up to 100 students above and beyond the 40 who are living there to bring together a collection of students on the So, from a design perspective, it was important that the building was in dialogue with the place and country that it sits on and the diversity of the students who come from. So to explore this sort of drawing, we worked with the Cultural Heritage Team to look at significant sites around the site and try and draw the building into a dialogue and discussion with those sites. Particularly important is Yarra Park, where it's a school, it's also a significant place to get cultural heritage, and this is a scarred trees in yellow, and there's remnants of landscape. And that was a really strong drive for us from the design perspective. How can we connect the design back to those remnants of landscape? And build a new history for the mid students here in Melbourne. Same time. So, to do this, there are three key design strategies. The first is to set the building within a reclaimed native landscape um, to connect students to country and to the broader context of the area. The second is to have a street facing statement of who it's up, um, public housing administration facilities. Uh, and that's also uh, two stories in scale, set back from the street to provide the sort of landscape buffer and celebrate that native landscape, um, but to sit within the context of the sort of adjoining terrace houses. And finally, place a sort of a boarding house or a harder work boarding house to the rear of the site across the three levels. Uh, that would connect back out to the north and south into sort of courtyards and on top of the street facing building to the west um, with a roof terrace. This is the ground floor planning with the administration facilities and some of the house property. Yeah. Here, um, and the boarding house is back with its landscape space to the side. So, beyond how the building is sited, how, how should a project like this express the values of who it's are, what their aspirations are, and who their students are? And that question was a really key part of the design process. So, we envisaged the facades as sort of canvas for uh, cultural exchange and for celebrating those students. Uh, so, to do this, we worked with a staff member, uh, the Rain Community Rush, who did this art, custom artwork for the project. It's called the First Bees, it's a Dreamtime Story. Uh, of transformation where then spirits turn into bees. There's analogous to the students growing from young men, yeah, young boys and girls. Yeah. That's a detail of the artwork, and then we realised uh, so there's, there's a screen that wraps the facade, particularly the west facing component, and um, it sort of tells the stories of landmarks that it's, it's the first elevation of the there are some more components to that that you will see later. Internally, there's this aim to create some sense of calm and welcome, a refuge for students and for visitors, parents away from the hustle and bustle of Richmond. You can see that's what we get in the foyer spaces and continuing through the interiors. It's really robust materials, it's still a boarding house there, young boys and girls, and it's really robust. And internal materials and external materials blend 
to sort of certain sort of transport of the robustness for the connection to outside. Um, in addition, there are a series of sort of informal and formal meeting spaces that are really, really important operational instruments to connect their students and their operational team back with families. This is an image of the dining spaces again flying seamlessly out to the sort of small sort of light world court out to the north and to the south we get into a more active fly space. Um, the courtyard here is to point to another piece of artwork by also another this staff member. Um, it's sort of a poor paved artwork by Indigenous artists in the green. And it tells the story of this book. The artwork is called Black Man's Map. It's derived from a series of topographical rain maps about people's connection to the country. Level 1 and Level 2 uh, are sort of relatively similar in plan. They include a, a number of dorm rooms, but also a series of social spaces, uh, study spaces, lounge spaces. This idea of the, the building not just being a place to live and sleep in, but it's a sort of place for cultural exchange to bring students together, not just in this facility, but across the various instances. Level 2, the setback for the boarding house, so the eastern end to the front of the room terrace. Importantly, there's this sort of continuity of storytelling through the interiors as well. The celebration of the people who are occupying spaces. Design elements draw from each of the six regions where these students come from. And that's through fabrics, lighting, wallpaper, artwork, a variety of other wayfinding and graphics, and serious other things. And importantly, that's about connecting the students to their own. So, designed and built through COVID, um, the project is really made possible by the collaboration with general parties that's sort of guided by this vision that's really a driving factor for the project here. Um, head contractor Kane, all subcontractors, material suppliers, consultants. It's an amazing project, probably not particularly repeatable, but a um, phenomenal buy in for everyone to deliver an outcome. But a huge grief cost escalation, subject to ongoing value management before tender, at tender, construction. Operation that's been really the hallmark of the success of the project. But sort of to close, I think, mean, unlike anything we've certainly worked on, maybe we'll again, but there's really two really, really significant things this project does. Firstly, it creates greater and more connected with the community, particularly in the context of occupation of colonial site, opportunity for the brand new buildings as we are. It's a hub for those students in a safe space that fosters a sense of belonging in the community. Um, and there's the space is specifically tailored to their needs rather than sort of jammed into existing buildings to make things work. Also, um, the buildings are what? No, sorry. Um, I think also that the, the building has allowed kids and their students to connect with the most important people to those students, which is their families. And that's sort of more than just technology and media rooms. It's about how it feels. Uh, the client feels a bit better than I do, so I might leave that.